Hey, are any designers or fashion students watching this right now? If so, check out, check out these patterns. I bet they are a source of inspiration. Today, I'm going to tell you about the prettiest tiny moth species I've had in captivity since a long time. The crimson speckled flunky, Utetaisa pilgella. What the hell is a crimson speckled flunky? Well, you're about to find out today. And it looks like my mom left some disgusting coffee stains here on this table. Should have cleaned it before recording, but never mind. Yeah, in here is our animal, animal of study today. That's right, can we zoom? Our crimson speckled flunkies are in here. Oh yes, oh yes, this is the pupil stage of the Utetaisa pilgella. Utetaisa pilgella. The crimson speckled flunky. Uh, these pupa have a habit of hatching extremely fast. So, and this container, if I leave them in here, we're going to be in trouble. See if it can eat, so even closer, yeah. Got the nice details on those pupa. That's right, kids. So I'm going to show you how you can make your own container that you can use to hatch various moth pupa. This is a very primitive setup that usually works for very small species. So make sure the paper towel is touching the ground like this. Important is that the species can climb up the walls of the cage. When they are ready to become a moth, they will fl inflate their rings. First thing they will do is climb up. They want to find a high spot. Let's put our flunkies in here. See that there's one pupa left. I'll uh, have to put it in one in with my greasy little fingers. There you go. It ain't that hard, it ain't that hard. So next what you can do is you can add some very, very light misting. Like one, two, that's it. Not more. Because if you overdo it, you're just inviting mold to grow in the container. Yeah. And of course, you put a lid on it. Very simple. And now we wait uh, about a week on room temperature. Should be enough. This uh, small species will hatch fast. A few weeks later, there they are. Crimson, crimson speckled flunkies. I thought her name sounded funny. I have honestly no clue what a flunky is. Turns out that it's actually an outdated English word that refers to a servant or a footman. My guess is that it's a reference to the type of outfit that servants used to wear, especially if they work for nobles or royals. Perhaps even a jester costume. It also fits in with the naming theme for a group of moths called footman which are small tiger moths from the genus Coscinia, which some of, um, some of which I discuss in other videos on this channel, by the way. This species is an excellent migrant with a huge range that is found all over tropical Africa, very large parts of tropical Asia as well, but also the Mediterranean and southern to central Europe and North Africa. To name all the countries it is recorded in would make this video incredibly long. Due to its excellent migratory skills, this species is sometimes recorded as far north as the United Kingdom or the Netherlands in Europe, or recently even up to Finland. Despite that, they usually don't end up reproducing here, for they exclusively feed on the Barangenacea plants, which are present but not ubiquitous in temperate climates. Their favorite being Aegean, Heliotropum, Lithospermum and Gossypium. It could also be that in the very northern parts of their range, the climate is simply too cold for them to be able to sustain themselves, since this is a species that prefers tropical to subtropical climates. Due to their food, the caterpillars accumulate a large amount of alkaloids, 
Consequently, also the moths are toxic and unpalatable to birds. The characteristic coloration of its wings also serve as a sign of a warning to their predators, also known as aposematism. To sum it up, their warning colors warn predators of their toxicity. In captivity, the insect must be fed sugar water every few days in order to stay healthy. If you care for them well, they can live a surprisingly long time for such tiny moths, however on some occasions even over a month time. Feeding time is never boring with these tiny little fairies, however. With some good luck, yes, they will pair too. Copulation is easy to spot, for the moths will be stuck together for a good few hours. After that they will detach later and the female will lay a bunch of eggs in random places, but preferably on a host plant. And then they will produce a whole bunch of tiny little eggs that you can scoop up with a brush. When kept in room temperature, you can expect the eggs to hatch in about two weeks, after which you will have a ridiculous amount of babies. These babies you can offer many of the plants that I mentioned before. They like being dry and well ventilated. I wonder if I can raise these caterpillars. It's a bit difficult for me to get their host plants in this time of the year, unfortunately. Anyways, this is just a short video talking about the biology of these cool, cool insects. Hope you enjoyed watching it today. I love tiger moths because their ecology and life histories can be complicated yet rather interesting. I hope you liked my video about the crimson speckled flunky and I do hope to see all of you again in the distant future in my newest videos. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.